There we go. George, how you doing, brother? Doing good, man. How are you? Doing pretty good. I can't complain. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, first, I just want to say uh, I'm happy that you're a part of this. I'm grateful and honored. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a good episode, and uh, we're going to get a lot of value from it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why we're here, bro. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, first first thing I want to do is I want you to just give an introduction uh, by yourself and your story. My story? It's, um, you know, I come from, obviously, I come from humble beginnings, you could say. <laughs> immigrant, immigrant parents, like like a lot of uh, a lot of people my age are. I'm in my <laughs> early 20s. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm in my early forties, um, but it, young though you could say that if you want, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, so yeah, um, I grew up in the city of Bell Gardens. Uh, I'm not sure if people know where that is, but that's uh, over like in the Downey area. Um, Bell Gardens is like the next city over. Um, so I grew up in that area, and um, I grew up uh, when both of my parents were always working. You know, working hard you know, trying to provide for myself and my brothers. And uh, I kind of grew up with that entrepreneur entrepreneur mindset since I was a kid. My parents owned the business. My dad owned the business. And um, pretty much all of my uncles from both my mom and my dad's side had a business. So I grew up. What you would say? I'm sorry? That it's kind of in your blood, you would say? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I guess so. Because I, I grew up uh, seeing, seeing what they did and pretty much I was working for themselves rather than working for, for other people. Um, and I grew up knowing, seeing that and obviously wanting, always wanting to have my own, my own thing. Um, so at a, at a young age, I started in the, in the music business as a DJ. You know, I started the, in that business when I was 12 years old, and from there, you know, man, I, you know a lot yeah. of nowadays they start really, you know, when they, I guess when you could say they could they could party, you know, like around 16, 17, like yeah, so that's, that's yeah. yeah, and it was actually it was more of an outlet because um, where I grew up, I grew up, it was like a little hub where different gangs were were always hanging out. Um, just in the street where I lived, in the four different corners of, of where I live, there was, I think, four, four or five different gangs. But for some reason or another, like where my parents, the house that they owned and where I grew up, it's a corner house. So gangs would always get together in that area and always fight. I mean, back then it was a, a lot of it was, was fist fighting. And of course, you know, within time, it, it became into drive-by shootings and so I, I grew up in that in that environment you know so getting into the music industry my dad um he um we had an opportunity or he had an opportunity to to buy a dg system for me and my brother just so that we can kind of uh keep our minds occupied and away from that um one of the things with us too that both my brother and i were always into sports so we we're always playing sports too since we were kids but getting into the music it, it was i've always been into music period but getting into the djing part it was something that it was just in me um i picked it up at a very young age and you know it was just it was just one of those things that it was like it just came natural to me and i fell i, I fell in love with it i found the passion for it um, I DJed my first nightclub when I was 16. It was a 21 over club and I was DJing at 16. I couldn't even walk out of the, the DJ booth. I could, if I wanted to go to the restroom, like, like somebody had to walk me in there. Like the manager was like, he is not leaving this booth. Um, so, you know, I just played by the rules. I didn't know any better. And, uh, as I got, a as I, as I got older, obviously started getting more exposure started DJing all the different clubs in LA area. I started DJing clubs in San Diego. Um, I I was a resident DJ at Papas and Beer in Rosarito, Rosarito Beach, Mexico for, for 10 years. And, you know, DJ in San Francisco, Austin. So you were not uh, somebody who was just like, a, like you were the real deal. 
when it came to yeah it. yeah absolutely um you know and i started back in the day when there was no digital it was all vinyl i mean i have a an extensive vinyl collection and you know did it with the turntables of 1200s and did it the 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 real way per se you know <laughs> but uh again you were the real real deal <laughs> yeah back in the day man that's uh we didn't know any better i mean whenever i would go dj anywhere when i was djing at, at uh papa's and beer because i would do long sets we're doing um three four hour long sets i would i would usually carry about four or five bags of records with me a vinyl so to carry the records obviously friends of mine always wanted to come to papas and beer and they can get in for free when they were charging 50 bucks to get in so it was cool man i would walk in and get there and just make a call when i was walking in well even then you were like they want to get in i'm gonna bring my friends we all have a good time but you know what helped me a little bit yeah of course like you know how of course this works so it's like Oh yeah, everybody want to get in, grab a bag, let's go. <laughs> you know, so that's how that's how it worked, you know. But it, it was cool, man. We had a lot of a lot of fun, you know, and then that evolved into music production. Um I started get working in uh working on music, getting uh getting into studios and uh working with artists, working with uh live musicians, like percussionists, um learned engineering, so I would engineer engineer tracks, do mix downs, mastering. And in 2010, I think it was, yeah, in 2010, I started a record label. So I started releasing music, not just my music, but I started releasing music for other people, other artists. Um, the label still, is still going on today, it's still working today. It, the label's called House Tribe Records, and it's all catered to dance music. It's not your traditional EDM, type of dance music it's more like on the on the like the the soulful soulful afro latin type of vibe a lot of percussion a lot of live instruments um a lot of vocals if you're aware of music yeah edm is just like a term but like correct just, just like there's a lot of genres in edm there's a lot of like you know trans progressive correct so you know correct so there's so there's different different genres of music. The the music, like I said, that, that we cater to in the on that label, it's it's more of the house genre, the the deep house genre. You can say it's the, some people consider it soulful, some people consider it Afro Latin, some people call it consider Afro house. You know, so there's there's a bunch of different genres. So that label, like I said, it's still running, it's still going. We're on our two hundred and seventeenth release. That's going to be coming out. Um, that release coming out in t in two weeks, um, and then you know, just it's always been fun. That's always been fun. It's always been a part of me. But the thing that's crazy that even though I did the DJing, I did the label, and back then I used to make really good money DJing. I mean, there was even I even did the wedding thing for a while. You know, I was yeah. doing the wedding wedding DJing and, and DJing weddings. I was making twelve fifteen hundred bucks a night at you know, 20 years old. So, yeah. you know, I was making good money, even in nightclubs back then. I mean, I'm talking about way back then. We used to get paid really well to DJ nightclubs as as opposed to now. I mean, now yeah. as a DJ to DJ a nightclub, unless you're DJing in Vegas and you're one of these high profile DJs, you're making some good money. If you're just a DJ that's just starting out or not really, or trying to build a name, you know, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of people that take advantage of you. You know, they tell you come in, come in, DJ the club. Uh, I could only, I can only pay you gas money, twenty five bucks or whatever. And you know, they'll give you a couple of drinks, but then they want you to be a promoter too and bring people. And it's like, no, that's not the way it was back then. You hired me to DJ. But that's you know, what I was doing. The thing is, like nowadays, it's easier to be a DJ. Back then, it wasn't. True, true, absolutely, and it cost a lot of money to be a DJ back then because vinyl music, vinyl records. I mean, if you were getting a domestic record, it was like five bucks. Um, if you remember back then, I mean, we're talking about the '90s back then. I think minimum. I he was probably posting some videos of himself back then. How he used to carry crates with him, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. So all you need is a laptop. Actually, not even that anymore. Now you could just carry everything in the flash drive. And, uh, and 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 just plug in and you're ready to go but um back then like it, it was it was crazy like i i've 
if I was doing stuff here locally, I was usually making eight, 900 bucks for, for a one hour set. If I was traveling, it could be 12, 1300 bucks plus expenses, you know, like they would pay for flight hotels, all that good stuff. So, so it, was, it was good. It was a, it was a fun run. It was cool. I mean, I, I love the music's always been a part of me, so it's been cool. But what I was going to say that even though I always did had that like, side get going, I always had a job too. I, <laughs> I always worked the nine to five and which is, complete opposite from what i grew up in you know you needed that nine to five or it was just in you like i have to like no it was you know what it was man it was mindset bro yeah i had the mindset of i had to work it it was it was crazy because i was making there was there was uh for 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 a time period i was making more money djing than i was working but i didn't know any better you know i just it was just one of those things you just don't know, you know? And I always felt like, oh, I need to have a job no matter what, even though like what I would make DJing in one night, sometimes I wouldn't make twice as more than I was working at my job the whole week. Yeah. And, but it, it, you know, it was just one of those things, but I learned a lot though. I learned a lot. I, lo- I learned a lot about work ethic. I learned about networking. I learned a, a lot about how to how to work with different individuals, different personalities, different people, you know? Yeah. One of the things that's that's really crazy that, um, it's funny too, because uh, I, I brought it up to my wife uh, a few years ago that, you know, I didn't go, you know how they say burn the bridges? You got, when you're gonna do something, you're gonna burn the, or burn the boats, sorry. Yeah. You know, burn the boats, go all in. I didn't burn the boats until I got into real estate. Cause something clicked and I was like, you know what? I'm done working for other people. I got to work for myself. Yeah. And, um, the, that whole entrepreneurship mindset just really sat in. But the thing that was crazy, I, 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 I don't know how it just all clicked. And it was just one day, it was one of those moments where it's just, you just wake up. Um, you know, this enough, this is I have to like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, the thing was that too, yeah, the thing was that at, at my previous... I've had, I've had that before, and it's just like, it just like, it feels like everything just magically comes together, and you're like, okay, man, wake up, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like, like something gets lit on you, you know? <laughs> and, um, and one of the things that really did it for me, too, that where I was working at before, um, I ended up uh, with two surgeries. Um, I had to get feet uh, surgery on my feet because... I used to walk a lot on in still toe boots and it was just, it, it just killed me, man. And, and yeah. it, it just dawned on me one day. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm going to die. I'm dying here slowly working at this place. Would and, you say that, would you say that, that, that made you also like think different because I've had surgeries myself. Absolutely. I feel like I look at the world way different because of that. And oh, I absolutely. a lot more alive. Like just just being healthy, like little things, and like most people would just be like whatever. Yeah. Yeah, just like like you say, your feet, like you're able to just walk if you want, you know, like. Yeah. You know? No, and it, and it, it, you know what I'm gonna tell you, man, it really sucked because I had surgery. Um, was that right when we got married? I don't remember. It was after. We, my wife and I, got married in December, and then my birthday's in January, January 17th. And that following week, I had the first surgery done on my right foot. And the week after, I had the second surgery done on my left foot. So it, it was it went for like a two and a half week period that I literally couldn't really walk, man. I couldn't really do anything. And I, it really, like something just really sat in me. I was like, dude, this is not right. This is, yeah. you know, if I keep working here, I'm going to, what's going to be the next surgery? You know, I kind of went through that whole step or that whole process you know like imagine what your life would be yeah like this or that or that and and correct like, like if i'm able to walk again what the hell am i going to do and i'm going to do that yeah exactly because you're here now and you're doing it so yeah yeah exactly and the, and the thing that was cool that you know i just i made up my mind at that point you know what i'm going to get my license during that time that that i was off because of my surgery i was like you know what i'm just going to concentrate on getting my license and and so I could test for it. And yeah, I just hit the books, passed the test on the first try and just started working, man. And 
first year, first year in real estate, I was working full time. And yeah, let me just say this. So I remember when I first met you, how we talked about, you told me that this was just a side hustle for you. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Man, if I could do this, like you, you said, you did amazing things with this just being a side hustle. But again, you're a guy who's always like, you know, having a lot of jobs, right? You're like, I'm going to just. I always juggled. You still had results. And you're like, and then you said, what if I could do this full time? Yep. Imagine. That's exactly, that's exactly, that's exactly how, how it all played out because the first year in real estate working full time and, and I was working some pretty crazy hours at my old job. I was working, I think I was going in like at, like at nine thirty or 10 o'clock. I wasn't getting off till like 7 PM and after work drive out to show properties or meet with clients every weekend I was working. I mean, I really sacrificed a lot of time uh, away from the family, you know, um, my son was young back then. He was playing soccer, starting starting to play soccer, and you know, I had to work around his games because I was I, I I tried to do everything possible to to be at every one of his games, and there were certain times that I couldn't. You know, there were certain games that I had to miss, but it was little sacrifices I had to make to to kind of get to where I wanted to get to. The best part of it that my wife and the kids I had their full support, and if I didn't have that support from home. It would have it would have been really really hard, I think. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, I think you still would have came through. But yeah. like said, it would have been harder. Yeah. It probably would have taken you a little bit longer. Yeah, absolutely. Because absolutely. Because you support system, with especially from your family, your wife, your kids. Yeah. I mean, that's all you need, really. You know, like. And no, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And and you know what? What what's uh, what's what's um, what really like. I guess shifted my mind that the first year in real estate, working full time, doing real estate part time, I ended up selling, I think it was seven houses the first year. And then I looked at my commissions, I was like, holy crap. Yeah. Like, I made almost as much as that I did working full time. I was like, and that's when I started really sh- changing my mindset of like, dude, I got, I got to get into this full time. Yeah. And sure enough, every year since that, you know, it started. I would sell more and more and more every year. I think I was, the production was going up about between 25, 30% every year. And yeah. then until you, man, you were one of the people that stood out to me in the, when we first met in that, with JJ's, uh, real yeah. like you, you know, you just, your confidence, the way you handle uh, objections and stuff. I was like, this yeah. guy knows a thing or two, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I learned a lot. I I had a lot of good, um, mentors. I've always been in, involved in coaching. Um, even now, I still coach now. Um, and, you know, I always had, I always, you know what, I always gravitated towards people that did better than me. Because that's, that's the way you're going to learn. You, you know, you have to, you have to go, you have to see who's doing more than you and gravitate towards that yeah. and start at, and, and start asking questions. One of the things that's, that's really crazy about me that, you know, that my wife always tells me that and she, she'll tell me in Spanish playing around, Eres bien preguntón, meaning that, that I ask a lot of questions. Let me, ask, but, let, let me tell you this in Spanish. So well, well, somebody told me, pero no te quedas con la duda. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But you know what though? That's the way you learn. I mean, if you really yeah. want to know something, are you going to sit there and wonder or are you going to say, hey, you know what, let me talk to this person and see what the hell they're doing? Yeah. You know, that's always been a motto of mine. You know, what's another thing, too, that was crazy that when I was 17 years old, um, my mom, my mom's always had this, like, she's always been a very positive thinker. And she's always been this type of person that's always looked for opportunities and looked for to better herself and better everybody around us. When we were 17, when I was 17, I was 17. My brother was 19. My mom got us tickets to go see Tony Robbins and it was in Anaheim. And I remember my mom bought us the tickets and she's like, you know what? You guys are going to go to this. And I was like, the fuck is this? Who (laughs) is this guy? You know? And then I looked them up and I was like, dude, this guy looks like, you know, cause he has that big jaw. I think I said, I think I said something like this guy looks like Herman Munster or whatever, you know, who the hell is this guy? But you know, I was like, all right, cool. You know what? I'll go with an open mindset. I'll, you know, I was, I think back then. 
you having that is already to me that gives you like a lot of credibility. There's so many people who are so close minded. Yes. Like they won't yeah. listen even if you tell them, like, this is a pen. Can you look at it? And they're like, no, I'm not gonna I know that's not a pen. And like this is like just look at it. Like, you know? Yeah. Like, that's how their mind works, some people. And yeah. So that's being open minded, I think, can open a lot of things and a lot of doors and a lot of possibilities. So I'll let you continue now because I No, ab- I absolutely. No, no, absolutely. I mean that that was the thing that you know, my mom, when my mom brought that up to us, she's like, you know what, just go, just go and see what this is about. And, and just go like, even my mom wasn't really sure what it was about. She just knew it was good, but she had, she, she didn't really have a clue what it was about. So we went and man, I got to tell you that weekend was like, um, uh, it did something to me. It really changed something in me. I did the whole walking on the coal, yeah. You know, doing that whole, the, it was a whole thing. Like it, it was a three day seminar and it was, man, I, my mind was blown. It was crazy. And that really, I think that's the reason why it, it took my music career, my DJ career to where it took it to. And then when I was going to start the, the record label, I had a lot of negativity of, oh, why are you going to do a label? Why are you this? Why are you that? Blah, blah, blah. It was just very negative. And I was like, you know what? I was like, screw you guys. You guys don't pay my bills. Yeah. If I, if I, I'm going to do it. And if I, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You went from why, why do I start a label to why don't I start a label, right? <laughs> like, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and it was just one of those things where, you know, the music industry is a really tough industry. And yeah. I was just like, hey, you know what? I don't want to, I'm, I'm not the type of person that's, that, that likes to live on, on regrets or be thinking of the what ifs. Like, yeah. oh, what if I would have done this? What if I would have done that? I, I just, I mean, there's some certain things I just do. Yeah. Don't ask me why. I don't, I, don't, well, huh? I don't want to be old and be like, man, what if I would have done that? Or what if like, it's just, it's not like, that's like my worst fear right there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, it's, there's, there's just so many, so many different, different opportunities that come up, but seeing that's the thing, like if you don't have the right mindset for it, you're not going to see those opportunities. Like, and this all goes back to the music stuff and back to being being there at Tony Robbins because I think being there at, at that Tony Robbins event at 17 years old, even though I was so young and I still had that childish mentality. Um, well, I think I still do. <laughs> I still had that childish mentality because I, I love to mess around. Us guys, we never grow up. We just learn how to be mature, but we yeah. always a kid inside of us. Just, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, man. Far, and, uh, you know, like a lot of, like a lot of things, but. No, yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, my, you, you ask my wife, she'll tell you, I'm probably, the, I'm probably the youngest kid in the house, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but being at Tony Robbins, I think it opened so many, so many, um, vaults in my head, you know, so many things that I had in there that just, you know, different ideas. And I started seeing the possibilities I started seeing. And, and the thing too, that was, crazy that I got to meet a lot of people that at that event that were that were business owners and back then I didn't even know what an entrepreneur was I remember hearing them talk about entrepreneurs but I, I had no idea what it was but I did meet a lot of business owners and I was like man he's doing this he's doing this he's doing that and um the thing that's crazy that I didn't really see myself as a business owner until now until until we started doing real estate you know yeah. um it was always like it was always like, oh, that's just something that I do, you know. But um, you know, fast forward to now, everything that I, that I went through and everything that I learned and everything that I saw and all the other experiences that I had with music and with starting the label and with different, you know, meeting different people, getting to DJ in other states and different parts uh, of different areas, you know, being playing in other countries, it, it was awesome. And that all, I think, carried over to what I do with real estate now, you know, because with real estate, the way we run our business and the way I'm, I'm teaching our agents to to run the business and to do their business, um, it's it's uh, it's all service. Everything is service when you're when you're in the music industry and DJing. Yeah, you're doing something that you love, but you're catering yeah. to a big amount of people. You know, you're catering to thousands i mean the biggest crowd that i did that i ever dj for was about twenty five thousand people and 
it's like if if you're gonna play, if you put a song on that that you see kind of feeling the crowd dying, you gotta be able to change it quick and yeah. and adapt to it. And it's kind of like the same thing with real estate now because with real estate you're dealing with a lot of people that if you're dealing with the with a home buyer buyer that's never bought a home, they're going through this process for the very first time. They're scared shitless, man. I'm gonna be honest yeah. with you. Like I want to say about eighty percent of them are like one of the biggest perspective of their life. Yeah, absolutely. And some and some people save money for years, man. I, there was a couple that we helped. Um, I, wish I could tell you right away, the way you're telling me, you got compassion and you care about people. That's absolutely, man. And and that might earn you a like for some people that are, might not think like that. Yes, you're gonna get somebody. You're gonna sell them a house and you're gonna screw them over. But you know what? They're not gonna. You're not gonna get more clients from there. It's not worth it, man. It's not, not worth, it. worth it. it. It's not worth it because you know what? You're 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 working with with people's livelihoods, man. You're working with people's lives. It's not about. It's not about the house. It's a big it's decision. About, it's about a lifestyle. You know what I mean? A place for their family. A place for them to feel safe. A place. There's there's more than just the house. You know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, um, there was a couple that we helped last year. They've been saving money for 10 years, bro, wow. for 10 years. And it's crazy because the, the wife works at a fast food chain restaurant. The husband, he has two jobs. He's a, he works at a, at a, like a steel manufacturer and he's a cook in a fast food restaurant. Yeah. And dude, these, these, this couple, Awesome, awesome people, man. Like I actually just spoke with Carlos about a week ago, a week and a half ago, and um, they're just super cool people, man. I and you know, like I build a good friendship with them. Do they? We help them buy two, uh, actually a, a single family with an ADU, and they moved into the single family. They were paying seventeen, no, they were paying fifteen hundred for a, for a one bedroom apartment. Yeah, and in two months they were going to raise the rent to 1750. So he was like, man, he's like, I need to do something. I'm not going to pay 1750 for an apartment. So we got to work. We got to work quick. We were able to uh, get them qualified. They, they got qualified for, I think they were qualified for about 530, 540. And we were able to find them a, a home in the area that they already lived in with an ADU. Mm -hmm. When they bought the property and I gave him the keys, he was just like, man, I cannot believe that this happened. And they already had the tenant. Yeah. Yes. And they already had the tenant in place for the ADU with the tenant paying. I think the tenant was going to pay 1500 Wow. And their mortgage was going to be 1400 wow. in a house. And they're, that. Yeah, they're pretty much set. And that's amazing. All their hard work is going to pay off. Yeah. And you were able to help with that process. Absolutely, man. It was a, and those, those are the, those are the type of stories that we, we love, man. And those are the type of people like, honestly, like myself, man, when, when a client comes to us that, that, you know, poses a, a, a type of a challenge, I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, dude, I'm down. Like, I want to, I want to make this thing happen right now. One of our, one of our agents, Abner, you know, right now when you used to say, oh, I was the DJ, I was making this much money for now, like, now, now you're making money, but now you have more free, and you're getting that fulfillment of being able to help somebody. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's worth a lot more. Oh hell yeah, it's worth a lot more, and you're yeah. you're building relationships. You're building relationships and friendships for for a lifetime. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's one of the biggest, like I said, the biggest things about about the business. How we run our business. It's it's all service driven. Um, everybody that we work with, we build a relationship with. Um, like right now, like I said, you know, one of our agents, Abner, he's working with a, a, a couple, they're retired, never bought a home. Nobody wanted to help them, man. I, we, we started talking to Anthony about four months ago and he's been looking for a home for about two and a half years. Nobody wanted to help them because their price range is really low. And here in LA, you know, they can't find anything in that price range here in LA. So a lot of people are like, no, you know what? We don't, we don't. We, they would just pass them up, pass them up, pass them up. So the first time that we, that we spoke with him, he, he told straight out, he's like, you know what? I've, I've 
been passed up because of this, because of that. And then he had the, the misconceptions, all you realtors, all you realtors, all you realtors are looking for this, all you realtors are money hungry. Yeah. And, and you know what? We just, we just heard them out. We just heard them out and we're like, okay, you know what? What areas do you want to look in? What what uh what type of home do you want to find? Right now, uh, we've been writing offers for them every week, and you know we're we just wrote an offer for them today again, and you know we have I think we have a really good opportunity to get this house that we're looking at right now, um, and it's right within their price range, right in the budget, the house that they want. So we're doing everything possible to try to get that house. But the thing that's really cool, man, and this is where and this is where people. Where, uh, where I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, this is where a lot of realtors drop the ball, man. Yeah. And they drop the ball big time because like Anthony, we've been honest with them. We've been straight up with them. We've been real with them. And we've told them, look, this is the game plan. We're going to do this, 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 this. So we've been working with them. We haven't backed down from them. We've been there, very positive, very supportive. So he uh, he just told us, hey, you know what? My son wants to buy a house, so I'm going to bring him over with you guys because you guys are awesome. And then uh, I think the the wife told us earlier today that I think she has a, her niece that might want to buy a house here in L.A. somewhere. So go. it's like, dude, look, we're, we're working with these people, cause, and that's what I'm saying. It's not about the money. It's about the relationship. You work with somebody, those people are going to feed you for a lifetime. I love that because to you, it wasn't about the money. Even the way you spoke at it from the beginning – but it got you more referrals. Yeah. Your intention absolutely. wasn't to get more. You were just trying to help out because he's, you knew the situation. You listen. Yeah. And what happened now? You got more referrals because of that. Because it, I believe in karma and that, that's exactly what, what happened there. <laughs> you know what's the, the best part too, bro? That we got referrals without even asking for them. That's amazing. That's the best, best part. And you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. That happens to us every year, at least a handful of times every year. Because intentions are good, and like you said, it's a it's a service for. It's not about us. It's about the client. It's about exactly the we provide. Exactly, it's exactly about the client. It's never about us, man. But but the thing is though that there's so many old school mentalities out there, or just people that don't have the right mindset, bro. That's why we have such a high turnover with with real estate. You know, people come into the business, they get their license, they figure, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get my license, I'm gonna get all these clients, make all this money. <laughs> It doesn't happen that way, man. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't happen that way. And it's it's been, you know what, it's been an it's been a really good ride, man. It's been a really good ride. I I well, mean I'm way you tell me, like I know it hasn't been easy, maybe in the beginning, but you like challenges and yeah. I think this is only the beginning. I think your company's gonna gonna grow so much bigger. Yeah, that's the goal. <laughs> that's the goal. You know, we we definitely um we definitely have some goals and in, in what we want to do, where we want to take this to, you know, um, and with the same mentality of, and the same type of service that we're providing everybody that we work with, you know, it's all about service it's about them. It's not about us. It's like, like one of the things I always tell, tell our clients when, when they're looking at that home that they really love, they, they ask us, you know, one of the questions that pops up a lot is like, what do you think about this house? And, you know, I, I tell them, look, I can give you guys my, my opinions and I can tell you what, uh, what I think about the house and that's all fine and handy. But in reality, it's about you guys. I mean, if you want, really want to know what I think about it, I think it's a great house yeah. or, or, you know what, I, this is cool. This is cool. And I'm, I'm just honest with them. I give them my honest opinion, but I tell them, look, that's what I like. Well, what do you like? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. This is what I like. But in reality, like, does this house make sense to you? Because, in reality, it's not about me. You're the one that's going to live here and you're the one who's going to make the payment. It's like, so it's not me. you're like, damn, this house is nice. It's got a nice pool. But then the couple's like, well, yeah, it's a, like, but then they might have a baby and they're afraid because, you know, they think the baby's going to jump in the pool, but they might not tell you that because they, you know, but yeah, that's exactly. You'd be like, look, I think it's cool because it's got a pool. You can go in the summer, but you have a baby. Yeah. Is that, is that something that you're worried about? You know, like just little, like being able to understand <laughs> and that's where listening comes in. Would you say that? Listening. Yeah, absolutely. Listening <laughs> and being compassionate, you know, being compassionate about, about other people's needs. You know, that's, that's, a, I think that's the, that's where a lot of, a lot of people fail. A lot of agents fail. Like they just, they don't, they're hearing you, but they're not listening. Yeah. You know? 
they're not so present. It's, it's a big, big difference for sure. Anyway, um, George, another topic I, I want to get into because I know that you're uh, fitness. Uh, I know that you run every morning or, you know, <laughs> and, you know, at least for me, you know, yeah. for me, the way that I do it is like know so much about getting buff or, or but it's just a, like when I go running in the morning, it's just like my mindset is so much better. Oh, yeah. You know, just because I'm like, man, I did something really early. I, like, it's not even about like, oh, I lost like three pounds. Like, no, like, it's just, it just does something to your mind, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, don't get me wrong, dude. If you jump on the scale and you lost three pounds, you're like, oh, fuck yeah. No, of course, of course, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but I'm saying mentally, you hitting the gym or whatever, it, it's, it just does something for you mentally. Like, it just, it, you know, you feel good. You know, you know what it does? It just really wakes you up, man. And it, it really wakes you up. It gets your blood flowing. Um, it just puts you in a whole different state. Like one of the things that I do when I go running, I never listen to music when I go running. When I, when I go, or I'm at the gym, um, I'm always either listening to something positive, positive podcast, or, um, or um, I'm listening to books. Um, I'm not too crazy about reading books, but I listen to them. I have a lot of a lot of reader. but you know I think everybody's different. Yeah, yeah, of course. Some people learn by hearing, some people learn visually, some people learn by reading. By doing. You gotta find out what you like the most. Yeah. And go for it. Because yeah. some people are gonna say, Oh, you gotta read like ten thousand books. You don't necessarily like you could go on YouTube yeah. way more visually or even listen to a bunch of podcasts and learn more that way. So you just never know, right? Yeah, I I definitely get a lot of a lot from podcasts. Um, I get a lot of motivation from there. I get a lot of ideas. I get a lot of inspiration from. I I love listening to podcasts, man. What um, podcast uh, you would recommend to people? Besides, uh, <laughs> what? Uh, well, you know what? Um, I'm a really big fan of Ed Milet. Ed Milet, uh his podcast is really, really good. He's he has some very powerful stuff. Yes. Um, I love listening to Andy Frisella, man, because Andy Frisella, you know me, man, I'm a potty mouth. Uh, yeah, Andy Frisella, right. dude, that dude, that dude speaks my language. Let me just tell you, he does cuss a lot, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big time, big yeah. time, bro. But you know what? Um, he speaks one of the, I think one of the reasons why I love listening to Andy and why I respect him because he he speaks the truth. Like yeah. he doesn't sugarcoat anything. He like tells you like it is. Like he no, he might no. hurt your he might hurt your feelings if you if you yeah. take it the wrong way. But but he's telling you the truth. He's telling you what you're doing wrong. That's what yeah. The, you absolutely. know I know I know him. He, I know his story. I know he's, he used to sleep on a mattress with his brother. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean they they came from from the struggle. They know the struggles. You yeah. know. So Andy Frisella is another one I listen to. Um, Lewis Howe. I like listening to Lewis Howe. Um, geez, I have there's just so many, man. I, I listen to a lot of a uh, lot of podcasts. Uh, Danny Morale too. I listen to Danny. Um, oh, JJ, <laughs> I listen to JJ's podcast. Um, you know, there's just so many, man. There's so many out there. But um, right now, books for anybody. Yeah, yeah. But right now, the the book that I'm listening to right now that it's just like, man, it's blowing your it's blowing my mind it's uh um outwaiting the devil by um napoleon hill what what's the name of it outwaiting the devil outwaiting the devil out outwaiting 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 the devil. the devil yeah oh man that book holy shit dude you listen to yeah. that book it'll blow your fucking mind especially with everything that's going on right now well, I have to listen to that myself and I'll get better with my viewers. I mean, this just to kind of give you a little a little background of that book. It's it's pretty much Napoleon Hill interviewing the devil on his plan to take over people's minds. To how how it is that he manipulates people to think the shit that they think. It's it's oh, here. dude. It is fucking crazy, man. Like when you listen to that book. Uh, I'm telling you, man. I'm 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 in that part where he's interviewing the devil, and I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> the thing that's crazy, the thing that's really crazy about this book, that it was written in 1932 or 1936, and it's and it's still uh, something you can read today. And like, 
No, dude. So they wrote the book in 1936 and they just published it maybe like 15 years ago. Wow. It was, it's crazy. But when you listen to that book, you, it, you're going to see so many similarities because he's talking about the Great Depression. He's talking about World War II. He's talking about World War I. And those, and he's talking about the era that's happening in that time. But that was back then. Yeah. And then you, you listen to it and you, you can relate to everything that's happening now. It's, it's, it's nuts, dude. It's, it's a great, great book, man. I highly, highly recommend it. I'll definitely post a link to it. I'll find it on somewhere. It's on, it's on Amazon. I, I know they have it on Amazon or you can find it. Yeah. Or so through, or through ebooks. We're out of time here. I think we've got about three minutes or so. Oh yeah. Go for it. Yeah. I just want to, I want to ask you for a couple of more things. Uh, yeah. Your favorite quote, what's your favorite ones? One quote that you live by. One quote that you live by is never judge those that try and fail, but fail those that, or judge those that fail to try. Perfect. I love that one. And then one last thing is uh, I want to give you the time to spread your message and plug your company or, or you know, anything that you want to say about you that people want to know. Things that about me. Well, I'm a I'm an open book, man. <laughs> I'm I'm an open book, man. If people want to reach out to me, you guys can reach out to me. Send me send me a uh uh you guys can email me at George Cardenas R E at gmail.com or you guys can find me on social media by my name, George Cardenas. Um uh, my my Instagram is George C Realtor. Um you guys can message me through there, reach out through there. I'm always willing to help. If somebody's struggling, I'm always willing to lend that help, helping hand. Um, what's your information on there so they know where to find you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, just tell them what is your message for life? Like, message for life is just don't listen to what anybody else says and and try to keep try to keep the stories out of your head, man. If you if you know, try to keep the bullshit out because if you keep telling yourself that you're not able to do something, you're never gonna do it. Procrastination is the worst, I think is the biggest enemy. Procrastination and then trying to learn how to do everything before doing it, you're never going to do it because by the time you actually step in, you learn something to do to do it, by the time you get in, it already changed how it's done. So would you say that it's better to just try and fail than never to try because you think you're not ready? No, it's, you know what? Yeah, absolutely. But you know what? There's a good quote that, um, that Steve Harvey says. It's like, you know what, if you there's something you want to do, just do it. The know-how doesn't matter. It's the, and the know-how, the know-how. Is, uh, yeah, the know-how is none of your damn business. Just go ahead and do it. One, one last thing, George. I, we're running out of time here, one minute. Okay. But, uh, I just want to thank you for being a part of this. Oh, thank you, man. Uh, yeah, uh, I'd love to have you for uh, part two, maybe. some We can set that up another time. So let me know. Uh, thank you again for, for providing this a lot of value. I think we this was pretty fun. <laughs> uh, hey, you know me, man. I'm I'm always I'm always down for this, dude. Just let me know. All right, George. George, uh, I'll put all your information down next to your your podcast episode. And uh, thank you. All right, Hector. Thank you, brother. Take right. care. Good night. All right, you too, brother. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.